Hello everybody and welcome to part 6 of the chatbot tutorial series with Python and TensorFlow. In the last tutorial we built our database, uh, we inserted all the rows, and at this point I'm assuming you guys have created a relatively large database of pairs. Uh, and then in this tutorial what I'm going to be showing you guys is how you can create training data from that database when it's done. If you don't have, if you have less than like 100,000 pairs, uh, I wouldn't suggest that you continue following along unless you're just kind of curious to see how things work. So <clears throat> with that, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So what we want to do here is basically to create the actual training data that we're going to use uh, for our models. Uh, we're going to be using, we're going to kind of poke around with a few models in this series, uh, but pretty much it's always going to be the same kind of format. And the idea is that generally what you're going to have is a... Um, a from file to a to file. So again, this is all kind of this basically, I'm not even sure if this is again, but, but basically what we're doing is TensorFlow sequence to sequence. Okay. So whether it's a chatbot, which is a comment and a reply, or it's a, uh, a language translation, which is what a lot of the sequence to sequence tutorials are doing, uh, or it's it could be anything. I mean, everything in life pretty much boils down to a sequence to a sequence. It's not really so much a, a fixed input to a fixed output. It's variable length input, variable length output. Um, and that's what's really intrigued me about sequence to sequence and especially some of the later um, <clears throat> implementations of sequence to sequence from TensorFlow. Um, that's what's pretty exciting about it. Anyways, back to planet Earth. Uh, what we want to do is create basically a parent comment file and then a and then a reply file where each row or each line number corresponds to the other file. Okay, so line 15 in the parent would be the initial comment and then line 15 in the, so line 15 in the from file is the parent comment and then line 15 in the to file is the uh, child, the reply to that parent comment. Okay. So in order to do this, we're going to import SQLite 3. We're going to import pandas as PD. If you don't have pandas installed, pip install pandas. Uh, then we're going to have time frames. And basically, I built this uh, with it in mind that I might have many different databases uh, with different times, so 2015.05. But really, I think that you know you might you might you probably combine them most likely if that's what you're going to do. But anyways, we'll just leave it that way. And then we're going to say uh, for time frame in time frames, uh, what do we want to do? So what we're going to do is we're going to build this connection, time, time frames. What we're going to do is build this connection and then use read SQL from pandas uh, to read it. No, you actually don't need to use pandas to do this. I'm just going to use pandas because uh, there might be times when I want to add a little bit more functionality, a little bit more logic uh, to uh, to the to the SQL kind of pull here, and or even just data manipulation or whatever. Uh, and for that reason, I'm using pandas here. But for what we're going to do in this tutorial series, at least for what I know I have planned out, uh, I guess you wouldn't need to use pandas, but I'm going to use pandas. So anyway, uh, connection will be sqlite3.connect. And we will connect to that database. So .db, wow, I did it again. db .format, uh, time frame. C, uh, the cursor, is equal to connection.cursor. Um, and then what we're going to say here is, first let's have limit equals 5,000. We'll say last unix equals 0. Cur length equals the limit. Counter equals 0. And test done equals false. You should know what all that means. <laughs> so limit will be how much we're going to pull at a time to throw into our pandas data frame. Uh, last unix will help us to basically buffer through our database. So we'll pull, we'll grab the last unix timestamp of that pull, and then we'll, and then from there we know, okay, in our next pull, let's say unix must be greater than last unix, and so we just keep doing that with, and each pull has a limit of whatever this number is. In this case, it's 5,000. Eventually, we could raise that. Mostly, I want 5,000 because test is not done yet. Uh, so generally, yeah, you're going to have a to or a from and then a to file. But you also want to have testing files, something out of sample, uh, just to see how the model is doing. So we're going to use a, a test file. And that test file will be the first 5,000 rows of data. You can make this anything. You could do 500. You could do 50,000. You could do 
hundred. Um, you can do whatever you want. I'm gonna say five thousand for now. Um, but yeah, you can you can do something else if you want. So then what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna ask the question while well, cur length is equal to basically whatever the limit is. That means we were able to make a poll that that completely exhausted whatever our limit was. So chances are either there's zero rows left, but we'll find that out in a moment, um, or uh, there's still rows left. So as long as we're able to get our limits worth from the database, we probably have more polls to make. So we'll keep making polls. So then what we're gonna say is df for data frame equals panda, so pd dot read sql. And what we're gonna read, whoops, read sql. What we're gonna say is um, the SQL statement. So we're gonna select, for now, we'll just do all from parent and reply, where Unix is greater than something. Um, and, uh, and this should be all caps, and parent not null, and score is greater than zero, but it sure as heck better be. Order by Unix ascending limit something. Okay, dot format. <laughs> and basically what we need to do is uh, Unix needs to be greater than last Unix. So it starts at zero. Um, and then limit, and I, I guess that's the only form, we just did Unix, and then the limit. Yeah, so that's all the things that we formatted. Awesome, so that's it. <laughs> Format uh, that, and then finally, the other thing, when you do a pd.readsql, you pass first the SQL statement, and then you pass the connection. So, connection, boom. Now, come down here. Uh, we're going to say last underscore unix equals df.tail1, so the last thing, unix, unix, dot values to zero with, boom. So now we've updated that last unix. Cur length, let's see. What's the length of the data frame? It should be whatever the limit is. Now we're going to ask, um, if not test done, we're going to with open, uh, we'll just call this test.from with the attention to append. And we're going to specify the encoding as UTF-8, um, as F. What we want to do is for content in df uh, parent dot values, what do we want to do? We want to f.write content plus a new line. And something felt wrong. Content plus new line. Okay. Uh, and then we basically want to do the exact same thing with test.2. So with open test2. And then this should be uh, comment. So those will match. Now, if the test Oh, well then also when we're done, we better say <laughs> test done equals true. Also, after this point, um, or really like prior like right here, what we would do is uh, if you wanted, you could update the limit. So we've already done the limit check, so we're good to go. So um, you could in theory update limit at this point. Hmm, no, that would get angry. You'd have to update cur length and limit temporarily if you wanted to do that. I'm not going to do that, but anyway, if you wanted to, now would be the time. Next, what we're going to say is else, so assuming test is done, um, we basically need the same thing, so I'm just going to copy this, paste, um, and then we're going to call this train and train. Again, this would probably be best as like some sort of function where the only parameter is the name of the file. So like test or train. Um, I'm gonna pass on that right now, but yeah, we could improve the script by doing that. Uh, now what we're gonna do is basically while that cur length equals limit, let's go ahead and counter plus equals one. And then if counter modulo 20 equals zero, let's print um, 
let's print counter times limit rows completed so far. So in this case, counter modulo 20. So basically it's gonna be like every 20 times the counter. So you'll see this out. So in this case, uh, I'm sorry, every 20 times the limit, you'll see this printed out. So it would be 5,000 times 20. So 100,000. Every 100,000 rows completed, uh, we're gonna get this information. So let's go ahead and save that. I'm gonna run it just to see if it works, but um, I, I didn't, I don't have a full poll, so I'm just going to stop this whenever it's done. Uh, maybe we should have chosen a smaller number. Okay, never mind. <laughs> okay, so we completed. Uh, let me pause this and let me check those files and make sure they are correct. Okay, um, so here we have our files. Here's our testing. So test from, test to. Uh, let's go ahead and open that. So test from two. So aren't they streaming it for free online? Yes, yes, they are, that poor bastard. So I don't know, I guess he bought, bought something. So we'll continue down here. So basically you should have only 5,000 rows. So I mean like the, the rows need to be exactly the same. Um, same thing though with train from and two, we should be able to open those up. And again, like line 28 corresponds to line 28. Interesting. Thank goodness for UTF-8, right? So, funny, dogs give the butt of approval. I just keep finding just really golden lines here. Here's our new line character. <laughs> okay, great. So that's what we need to do to get our data. Uh, if you did a full poll, obviously, uh, you're going to have much, much, much more data. In our case, we just have this data here. Uh, but hopefully you can have a much, much larger data set than just this such a short uh, little bit of data. All right, so uh, that's the end of this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're going to actually start talking about the, the models that we're going to use. There's at least two models that we're going to be talking about. Uh, so that's what you guys have to look forward to. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial.